Birds of a bite, no leora, im leora, yev, who is a noora, yes, I'd can up so sush has got Good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you today to share these few moments together to share the message of God. We do this all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're already about halfway through Lent. In Armenian, there's a beautiful expression. Right as you peak something, they say, A lot of it has already gone by, and even less is ahead of us. We're going to be hitting that spot this coming week as we approach the, the, the midpoint of Lent. It's called Michink. That literally means the mid, midpoint of Lent. And so the 40-day cycle will then sort of like pick up at a, at a peak and then it'll start going back, back down. So as a Christian who is taking this journey of Lent, we understand that we started off with this beautiful message of Pun Pare Gentan, reminding us of what beauty there is in life. And then we start heightening our awareness of our spiritual needs through prayer, through fasting, through almsgiving. And then we approach each of the Sundays one by one with a unique message that is shared with, one, with, the, with each of us. Our church fathers have given us what sometimes has been known as the golden chain of the Lenten season. This is one of our church fathers, his name Archbishop Schnork, very, very intel intelligent and leader of the Armenian Church last century. He went on to become the, the patriarch of Istanbul. He said it so beautifully. He says, each of these Sundays fits with the other one. He says, it's like this giant golden chain. And each link links to the next one in such a way that one is dependent on the other. And so too, here we are this Sunday. It's called the Sunday of the Dishonest Steward. Anirav Dundesi Giragi. That is a really difficult story to, to really understand. And we're going to try to do it very slowly today because it is, it is if you don't uh, do it too slow enough, you get very confused because it talks about somebody who is incredibly dishonest. And Jesus makes him into the hero of this story. I think this is what's so beautiful about this, this golden chain during the Lenten season. You see, Jesus is the only one who can transform what is bad into good. You remember in the Garden of Eden, what was it that the serpent said? Do you remember the serpent gave Adam and Eve the fruit and said, take and eat? Those were the words of condemnation. It threw them out of paradise. What did Jesus do? He took those same exact words, take and eat, at the Last Supper. And he says, this is my body. So those words of, of condemnation were transformed into the words of salvation. And so Jesus does this with these parables as well. He takes these despicable people and he makes them into the heroes. Because you see, a lot of times when people talk about church people, they say, oh, they must be all goody-goody. They must have halos on their heads. No. The church is not filled with good people. The church is filled with sinners. And you always got to remember that. Each and every one of us is a sinner. In other words, we're not, it doesn't mean we're bad. It doesn't mean we're awful. It means we're not perfect. That's what sin means. Remember we talked about this a few weeks ago. If you didn't catch it, make sure you hit it, okay? You got to understand that idea of sin. It's an archery term. You know, you have the bullseye, you pull back the you pull back the bow and arrow and you try to make that bullseye. If you miss, that's the sin. And each of us is trying to make the bullseye on perfection in life. And we try and we try and we're going to fail. That's part of being human, okay? So we are sinful people. And that's what the church is made of. The church is made up of people who sin. And so all around us, that's why we don't judge. And Jesus doesn't allow us to judge. He says, do not judge, lest you be judged. By the same way that you judge others, that's how God's going to judge you. So you better watch out. Don't judge people. Because you certainly don't want God judging you under those same standards, right? So today we get to this story. It's the story of the dishonest steward. Now, who is this guy? Well, we're going to look in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, and I invite you to read it. 
read it a few times. It's going to take a while because, uh, like I said, it's a very difficult story. In it, we find this man who is a steward. Steward means a manager, okay? He's the manager. Uh, he takes care of the books. He takes care of the finances for this, for this man who is very well-to-do. And they find out that there's discrepancies in the book. They find out that the, the manager, well, he's had some sticky fingers. He hasn't been doing his job properly. So the manager finds out that he's going to be fired. You're fired, Mr. Manager. That's what the boss is going to tell him. So he's, he's now worried. He's worried because it says over here that, well, he figured it out. He says, first of all, he says, I'm not strong enough to work. He says, what, I'm going to go out there and dig ditches? He says, I can't do that. And he says, and you know what? I'm a little bit too proud to go out there and beg. What am I going to do? He says, I've got it. I know what I'm going to do. He said, and so he goes out there and he finds whoever owns, owes anything to his boss, he calls him over. So he calls over the first guy and he says, what do you owe my boss? And he says, well, I owe him $1,000. Uh, the guy says, no, no, no. He says, how about this? How about... Give me $500 and we'll call it even. The guy says, okay, of course. I'm going to get a $1,000 deal for $500. Of course, I'll take it. So what did he do right there? First of all, he helped this other guy out. And he made a friend for himself. That's pretty clever, isn't it? He made a friend for himself. In the second instance, he goes up to the next guy and he says, how much do you owe my boss? He says, well, I owe him $800. He says, no, no, no. He says, cut it. He says, instead of $800, pay $500. The guy says, okay, of course, I'll do it. And so he cuts down the bill. Now, what has he done? What has this manager done? He's been dishonest, but he's figured out a way of making friends for himself using the means that he has. Using that money, he's made a couple friends for himself so that when he gets thrown out of his job, when he gets thrown out of his job, he will have a place to go. Because as soon as he's fired, he can call up these two guys, right? And he say, hey, you remember me? I'm the manager. I gave you a deal last week. Can you give me a job now? See, he's got friends. This is what in Armenian, you've probably heard this word. It's called jarbig. It means clever. He was very clever, okay? Now, Jesus gives this parable over here, and you people say, well, what is he talking about? Is he talking about managing? Is he talking about money? I thought Jesus was a spiritual man. Why is he talking about these management issues over here? And what an awful way of managing, a way of stealing money and taking what doesn't belong to you? No, Jesus isn't talking about that. In fact, he goes on and he says, he says, learn to make friends for yourself with that unrighteous money, with that unrighteous mammon. In other words, he's telling us that that money that we have in this world has a purpose. It has a means. It's a means. And Jesus says right here, he says, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. The sons of this generation are more shrewd. There's that word, clever, shrewd, jarbig. Okay? What Jesus is saying is not for us to go out there and be like the dishonest steward in the sense that we, we go and wheel and deal. But he's saying use the tools that God has given you. God has given you definitely talents, okay? One has the talent for music. Another has a talent for dancing. Another has a talent for thinking, for writing, for sharing, for talking. Whatever that talent is, use it. But also, Jesus is saying, the talent that's in your pocket. In other words, that money has to be used for something. You can't just hold it back. Use it to do the good that is necessary in this life. Think about a million dollars. If I were to tell you so-and-so has a million dollars in the bank, what is that? It's one with six zeros behind it. Most of it is zeros because that's all it is. It's just words. It's just letters. It's just numbers. It means absolutely nothing. If he's got a million dollars, you can look at it. You can think about it, but it does absolutely nothing. It just sits there. But you take that million dollars and you start doing things with it. You buy a house. You buy a car. What happens? All of a sudden, it now has value. You take that money and you start buying a house 
and a car for someone else. You say, well, what, would I do that? Well, of course, we do that all the time. They're called helping out hospitals, helping out churches, helping out organizations that help other people. Now that money starts working. It starts being used. You now become clever, jarbig. You are shrewd in the dealings by taking this, what God has given you, and using it, you have now given it value. And that's what the call is over here. The sons of light and the sons of this world. Jesus is just telling us that what we have in this world is real. Don't try to discount it. Too many times I hear Christians doing this all the time. Well, I'm living for the life to come. No, you're not. Jesus isn't interested in you preparing for the life to come when you close your eyes to the life that is down here. Jesus is interested in us being able to reach out and help and love and take care of one another. In fact, without any, without any hesitation, he, can, he finishes this parable by saying, He who is faithful in very little is faithful also in much. And he who is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. Think about that for a moment. How is the judgment? What is the judgment on? It's on what we do with our lives over here. What does it matter if you, if you keep everything in the bank, the spiritual bank of your heart, and not share it with anybody else? What good is that? What are you going to do to, 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 in the presence of God? Because you see, at the end of this story, the master comes up to the servant and says, give me an accounting of your stewardship of your managerial position. Give me an accounting. Show me what you have done. Bring me the books. You know who's going to do that, right? You know God's going to ask each and every one of us. God's going to say, give me an accounting. What did you do with your life? I gave you talents. I gave you, I, I gave you incredible opportunities. What did you do with that? What are you going to do? You're going to sit there with God and you're going to say, well, God, you know what? I just kept them because I was looking forward to living eternity with you. So I didn't spend any of it. What's God going to do? He's going to say, you wasted it. You wasted what I gave you. No. What God is looking for is for each of us to be able to use our talents, to use what we have, both inside of our hearts, outside of our hearts, for the good that comes in this world. And you know what it is. I mean, you know there are so many programs all around us, whether it's orphanages, whether it's the starving people, whether it's the homeless outreach. This is the time of Lent. Like I said, we're hitting that hump. And it's an opportunity when we get to that midpoint of Lent for us to really look and say, okay, we have built ourselves inside. And now as we're coming down the hill, we need to look out and see that there is a world around us. And that world is real. And we need to be able to reach out to that world. We need to be able to care for that world, to take care of that world. The Christian is called to a life in this world, not in, the, in a world outside of it. And here in this parable, Jesus Christ says it without any hesitation. He says that the sons of this world are shrewder. You need to use the means that have been given to you. Use that unrighteous mammon. Use those means that have been given to you to find how you can become a better person, how you can help other people, and leave the rest to God. This is the Lenten message that comes to us this week during the Lenten cycle. Now, as I said, we have these three weeks on top of each other. Last week we did the prodigal. Today we did this dishonest steward. Next week we're going to look at the unrighteous judge. I invite you to read these. Start off with Luke chapter 15. Today's parable came to us from Luke chapter 16. Next week we'll be at Luke chapter 17, looking at that parable as well. In all three cases, see how God has taken these examples and used them as the heroes for our lives, for us to, to take example from them, and then ask yourself, how can God use me so that I can be an example? How can God use me? I am ready to use my talents in the ways that only God knows and in the ways that I know that when I do, I'm going to be at peace with myself and peace with my maker. So that one day when he says, what did you do with the talents? He can say, well, you know what? It may not be perfect, 
but at least I help this person, I help that person, that person. That's what we do with talents. I invite you to get deep into the Lenten season. It's an exciting time. You know, I told you at the beginning, this is a time for reflection. I hope you're feeling the excitement because each week we're building on the week before in this golden chain. And I invite you to link with us next week when we see the next link on this golden chain. Until then, I want you to get involved in your church. There's so many opportunities. Call up your priest. Call up the people that are running the church, parish council, lady society, ACYO. Say, hey, how can I get involved? I'm ready. I want to give a little bit of myself. If you don't have a parish, get on the diocesan website. Pull down the parish's menu and say, hey, I want to get involved at a parish that's close to you. If you want to get involved with me, I'm at epostle.net. That's Apostolic Evangelism for an Electronic and Expanding Universe. Till next week, reminder that we do all of this to give praise and glory to the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit.